welcome back. Let's now try to find the solution of this problem. Before I solve this problem for acceleration, since we are asked to find the acceleration of point A, I will solve it for the velocity. And before that, I will tell you what, the, what do we mean by rolling. As far as the rolling motion is concerned, the rolling motion is the relative motion between two bodies. So if you look at the diagram, you have a disc. This is body one. And this body is performing some motion and it's performing this motion on some surface. That's our body two. So this is the motion between two bodies. This motion between the two bodies is in such a way that one point of body one at one instant of time, at one instant of time, okay, always and always, one point of body one is in contact with only one and one point of body two. That is, there is one is to one contact between the two bodies. What I mean to say is that if you see this point A, this point A is the common point between body one and body two. At point one, at this point A, at point A, the one point of body A comes in contact, one point of body one comes in contact with only one point of body two. Okay, this is the important condition for rolling. That is the essential and very important condition for rolling is there has to be one is to one. There has to be one is to one contact between the two bodies. There has to be one is to one contact between the two bodies. That's what we call it. That is the first condition for rolling. That is one point of this body should only be in contact with only one point of this body. Okay. Now see, after some instant of time, this point A will reach here. Okay. This point that was here will reach to this position. Okay. As this body will roll, this point A will go here. This point B will come down. So this is one point of this body that comes in contact with only one point of the body. Okay. There is one is to one contact between the bodies which are in rolling. Number one. Number two is if there is more than if one point of this body, if this point A is in contact with more than one point of body two, assume if if point A of body, if point A of body one, that is this point, is in contact with more than one point of body two, how is that possible? That is if point A slips forward, if point A slips forward and at instant t is equal to t one this point moves forward like this. Okay. So at the same instant, this T, this point A comes in contact with many a points. Okay. So that at that time, this motion is called, this we call as slipping. This is called slipping. Okay. This is called slipping. It's like, see, like we are, we have a cycle time. Let me take an example of a time. We have a time. Okay. And this tire is say, for example, rotating in this direction. So what happens initially at this instant of time, the center of the tire is here. After some instant of time, the tire moves forward. So this center moves slightly forward. Okay. This tire is slightly forward and the cycle tire as such will with this as a center, the cycle tire will be will, will be the cycle tire will be somewhere here. Okay. With this as the center, the cycle tire will be some, this will be the center of the cycle tire. Okay, because what is happening, the tire is the center of the tire is moving forward as well as the tire is also moving forward. Okay, it's like this. So now this will be the new center. So tire is moving forward. So at this instant, this point of the tire is in contact with one point of the ground. This point of the tire is in contact with one point of the ground. This is called a rolling motion. Now, say for example, now assume that the tire is like this. Now, let's suppose we have a tire like this. Okay, we have a tire. This tire is rolling on a surface on ground. Okay, one is to one point contact is there. The tire is rolling, the uh, rota rotating like this. Okay, so now you apply brakes on the tire. As you apply brakes on the tire, let's assume this road is muddy. Okay, there's a lot of mud on the road, and you apply brakes. So, what happens as you apply brakes, this point stops. Okay, but the contact between the tire and the ground continues. So, this point moves forward on the ground and because you are slipping on the ground. Okay. So the point, uh, the point of contact between the tire and the ground, uh, is the, the, the point of contact is not released. Okay. The point on the, the point of contact is not released. The point of contact between the tire and the ground is not released. 
and the contact continues. So one point of the tire, because the tire stops rotating, as you apply the brakes, the tire stops rotating. But what happens? This point moves forward. So one point of the tire comes in contact with many points of the surface. We call that as slipping. That's called slipping. So uh, slipping and rolling are different. That's why I was saying here, when you say rolling, there is nothing like that of slipping in it, okay? When you say the disc rolls, it means it's not slipping, it's rolling only. So writing it without slipping is actually a misnomer that you find in many of the textbooks. So now we have, so first condition, which I am telling you, the, for a disc, to, for a body to uh, roll, there should be one is to one contact. One point of the body should always be in contact, should only come in contact with one point of the uh, body too. That is the essential condition for rolling. Number two is, as far as the point of contact is concerned, this is very important point. In rolling, the point of contact is the point whose velocity is instantaneously equal to zero. The velocity of contact, point of contact is equal to zero. That is what happens in rolling, the point of contact, the point of contact, this is point A, okay? This disc is uh, rolling over this surface. So as the point of contact is established at the point of contact, the body A comes to, the point comes to rest. Because this point A, this is the interface between the, this is the common point between body one and body two. Body two is at rest. Body, this point does not move at all, okay? So what happens as far as this point is concerned, at this point, the body comes to instantaneous rest. So when, for example, this point, okay, this point is here initially, let this point be here, let's call this as point B, okay? Let's call this as point B. Now, this time, right now, point A is making contact with the ground. As point A is making contact with the ground, the velocity of point A becomes equal to zero, okay? Now, after some instant of time, this tire will move forward, this disc will move forward, and point B will now make contact with the ground. The velocity of point B will become equal to zero. So those points which make a contact with the surface, instantaneously, their velocity becomes equal to zero. The velocity of point, point in the, the velocity of the point A becomes equal to zero. This is the, these are the two important conditions of rolling. The first important condition for rolling is there has to be one is to one point contact, number one. And number two is the point of contact instantaneously comes to rest. Its velocity becomes equal to zero. Because this point A does not move with respect to the person on the ground, okay? The person on the ground says it's at rest. It does not move because the point of contact can, continues to be there, okay? So uh, let's do the velocity analysis. So we have point A whose velocity is always equal to zero. This is the important condition for rolling. Let's take a point B. Let's take a point B and this point B we take diametrically opposite to point A, okay? So let's suppose we have a point B here and point B is directly opposite to point A. This is point A, this is point A. So we have point B here, which is opposite to uh, point which is opposite to uh, point A, diametrically opposite points. So what is the velocity of point B with respect to velocity of point A? We are drawing vector from A to B. We'll write velocity of point B is equal to velocity of point A plus angular velocity of the vector AB cross radius vector drawn from A to B. We'll write this as our AB vector, okay? Let's treat this. Let's treat this to be our x-axis and let's treat this to be our y-axis, okay? So we have, as far as VB is concerned, we don't know the value of VB. We have to find the value of VB. Is equal to, as far as velocity of point A is concerned, the velocity of point A is zero. The point which comes in contact, its velocity becomes equal to zero for, for a very small instant of time. Then angular velocity of AB, angular velocity is given us, it is six radian per second and it's anti-clockwise, curl your fingers in this direction, the value of the thumb, the direction of the thumb will be along Z axis, so it will be 6K cap, cross RAB, the total distance from A to B is equal to the diameter, the radius is one feet, diameter will be one feet, and the direction will be Z, uh, Y axis, so it will be one J cap. So that is equal to six ones are six, that is equal to six, and K cross J, as far as K cross J is concerned, K cross J is concerned, so you have I, you have J, you have K, okay? So as far as K cross J is concerned, K cross J is equal to minus I. So it will be minus I cap, okay? 
so as far as the velocity of point b is concerned as far as the velocity of point b is concerned we can have the velocity of point b the velocity of point b is if you draw the velocity of point b vector it is 6 units along negative x axis so it is like this it's like this so the velocity of point b is 6 feet per second along negative x axis that's why we have written minus x axis okay so this is the velocity of what this is the velocity of our point b let's see what is the velocity of the center let's calculate the velocity of the center again right draw the vector from o to g okay draw the vector from o to oh, sorry draw the vector from a to g so we'll write the velocity equation as we'll write velocity of g is equal to velocity of o is equal to velocity of o plus angular velocity of uh, plus angular velocity of uh, o uh, o a g so omega a g cross so o yeah, a a a velocity of g is equal to velocity of a plus omega a g cross r a g okay so that's equal to velocity of a is equal to zero this term is equal to zero omega a g angular velocity of a g is same as the total angular velocity that is 6 k cap so this is 6 k cap cross how much is the radius r a g it is 0 0.5 it is 0 0.5 j cap okay so k cross j is minus i so it is 6.5 into 3 it's minus 3 i cap okay 6.5 into 0.5 is 3 k cross j is minus i so as far as the velocity of as far as the velocity of point g is concerned if you look at the velocity of point g the velocity of point g is only 3 meter per second okay as far as the velocity of point g is concerned it is sorry says feet per second since we have the units in feet so it is 3 feet per second okay and the velocity of point o is zero if you join these tips if we join all these tips together if we join these tips with the ground so it's in the form of a, it's essentially in the form of a, uh in the form of a triangle if you draw, join all these tips together it will be in the form of a triangle so look here what is happening in rolling what is happening in rolling motion this is very important the point the instantaneous point of contact its velocity is zero the point of the, the velocity of the center is v and the velocity of the point okay which is diametrically opposite to the point of contact is two times v okay this is very important this is three feet and this is six feet so this is how the velocity varies in rolling in rolling the point of contact velocity is zero the velocity of the center is v and the velocity of the point which is diametrically opposite to the point of contact is two times the velocity of the center so it is zero it is v and this is two times uh, v this is velocity analysis let's now perform the acceleration analysis so let's talk about the acceleration what is the acceleration of uh, a point uh, uh, acceleration of point o and acceleration of point uh, b equal that's very important as far as the acceleration analysis is concerned okay let me uh, stop here for some time to take questions from the students now in order to perform the acceleration analysis so what we do as far as the rolling body is concerned at this instant of time right now the center of the disc is here and the instantaneous point of contact is here okay this is fine now after some instant of time this disc is as this disc is rolling like a cycle tire this point g will move forward so point g initially was here after some instant of time this point g will be here okay so we can say that point g has translated from this position to this position after some instant of time so now point g which initially was point g which initially was here now is here okay so it has moved some distance along x axis okay it has translated some distance along x axis okay now uh, as far as the velocity is concerned it, it will be it it's translating along x axis this point g was initially here now after some instant of time this point g is here the distance from here to here the distance from here to here is equal to this is equal to the radius of the disk okay now this point g is translating along x-axis if you look at the center of this disk 
this point G was initially here. This point G is right now here. After some instant of time, this point G will move here. Then it will move here. Then it will move here. Point G will be translating forward in this direction, in the, in the direction of negative x axis. If the disk is not rotating like this, if the if disk is rotating in clockwise direction, then this point G was initially here, then it will be here, then it will be here, it will be here. So this point G is translating along X axis, like the center of the cycle tire. The center of the cycle tire continues to be translated, continues to translate, while as the cycle tire itself undergoes rotation. This is the case with scooter tires, bike tires, in car tires, every tire, every tire uh, works like this. Its center keeps on translating along the axis, okay, in the direction of the motion, while as the tire keeps on rotating, okay. Now the distance from the center, distance from point A to the center is equal to R. We need to see how much is the velocity of point G. Okay, how much is the velocity of point G? Okay, as far as the velocity of point G is concerned, we can write the expression for velocity of point G is equal to velocity of point A, the way we did it, plus angular velocity from angular velocity of A to G, which is along uh, Z axis, that's omega K cap, cross R. That is r drawn from r along j cap okay so va is equal to zero so velocity of g comes out equal to it's equal to omega it's equal to r into omega okay it's equal to r into omega and k cross j is equal to i this was the value of this is what we obtained previously as well if you look at the magnitude of velocity of g magnitude of velocity of g is equal to r into omega okay this is the value of magnitude of velocity of point g now, if we differentiate this velocity of point G, then we have derivative of velocity of point G will be equal to acceleration of point G is equal to R does not differentiate, R will come out. Differentiation of omega with respect to time, that's equal to angular acceleration. That is acceleration of point G is equal to R times alpha. Acceleration and linear acceleration of point G is equal to radius times the angular acceleration. There are actually four conditions that must be satisfied for a body to roll. These are very important four conditions. The first condition is there has to be one is to one contact. There should be one is to one point contact. Okay, the contact between the two bodies should be one is to one. There should be one is to one point contact between the two bodies. This is first condition. The second condition is the, the instantaneous point of uh, contact, the velocity of instantaneous point of contact should be equal to zero. The velocity of the velocity of the center should be equal to, should be equal to this r times the omega the magnitude should be equal to r times the omega fourth point is acceleration of the center that is acceleration of g for us should be equal to r times the alpha okay and the fifth condition is the velocity of the point which is diametrically opposite to the point of contact its velocity should be two times the velocity of the center. These are the five conditions that must be satisfied by a body to undergo rolling. So these five conditions are very, very important. Now, what we have to do, we have been asked to perform the acceleration analysis. So we'll write the acceleration formula. We will write, draw the vector from, we will draw the vector from A to G. Okay, so we'll write the acceleration formula. The acceleration formula that we have derived is, we will write acceleration of G acceleration of g is equal to acceleration of point a is equal to acceleration of point a plus is equal to acceleration of point a plus and we have uh, then we have uh, that is alpha angular acceleration alpha cross r from a to g so it will be r a g r a g minus omega square r a g vector this is how it will behave so that is equal to acceleration of g we know acceleration of g is equal to uh, acceleration of g is equal to a g it's equal to r times alpha so that will be equal to r times alpha means it was its total magnitude was r alpha minus i cap this was the total uh, in terms of direction as well it was r alpha i cap so magnitude is r alpha as far as r is concerned our r is 0 0.5 so it is minus 0 0.5 and our angular acceleration given is 4 radian per second square along i cap that will be equal to, uh, minus 2 i cap and unit will be 
feet per second square because our units are in feet. So it will be feet per second square. So acceleration of G is, is equal to minus two I cap is equal to acceleration of A. We don't know the acceleration of A, but we know the velocity of A is equal to zero. Acceleration of A plus alpha. As far as alpha is given to us, that is 4K cap. So we'll write this as alpha is equal to 4K cap. Alpha is given to us 4K cap cross reg that is 0 0.5 j cap minus omega square the angular velocity is 6 6 cross 6 is 36 reg is 0 0.5 reg is 0 0.5 uh, 0 0.5 j cap that is minus 2 i cap minus 2 i cap is equal to acceleration of point a acceleration of point a plus this is 4 into 0 0.5 is 2. Now we have k cross j. This is i, this is j, this is k. As far as k cross j is concerned, k cross j is equal to minus i. So this will be, this will be here, this will be minus i cap. Okay, then we have minus 36 into 0 0.5 is 18. This is 18 uh, j cap. Okay, so we can write acceleration of A comes out equal to minus 2i plus 2i plus 18j. Okay, minus 2i plus 2i cancels. So acceleration of A becomes equal to this is very very important acceleration of a becomes 18 j cap this is something very important meter uh, it will be units will be since it's feet per second square look into the acceleration of point a this is something that fascinates us as far as the velocity of point a is concerned the velocity of point a is zero but as far as the acceleration of point a is concerned acceleration of point a is not equal to zero but acceleration of point A is directed towards the center and its value is and its value is equal to 18 feet per second square. This is the next condition for rolling. Now we will sum up. As far as rolling motion is concerned, in a rolling motion, the instantaneous there has to be one is to one contact between the two bodies. One point of this body should always be in contact with, should come in contact at one instant of time only one point of this body should come in contact with only one point of this body. That's number one condition. Number two is the instantaneous point should come to rest. Number third is the velocity of the center should be equal to R times the omega. The third condition is the velocity of the point diametrically opposite to the instantaneous point of contact should be equal to two times the velocity of G. Fourth condition is that acceleration of G should be equal to R times alpha. And the fifth condition is, is that is the velocity, that's the acceleration of point A should be equal, should not be equal to zero. Acceleration of A point of contact should not be equal to zero and it should always be directed towards the center. That's what you call a centripetal acceleration. Okay. So in rolling, two things that we have to remember, that is as far as the velocity of the point of contact is concerned, the velocity of the point of contact is equal to zero, but the acceleration of the point of contact is never equal to zero. This is what they, what we are obtaining from this rolling. Now, as we go ahead and try to solve a few more questions, like uh, we have, we are coming up a few more problems that will be our part of the next lecture that will be hopefully delivering tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll try to solve these problems very quickly and then we'll go to the two frames of reference motions. Thank you very much.